Now, my next guest would, by his own account, rather comment on the news of the day than actually be the news of the day. That said, Calvin Robinson, I should say the Reverend Calvin Robinson, a familiar face on GB News, has found himself at the centre of a bit of a media storm recently. Since 2020, the Archbishop of Canterbury has been saying the Church of England is, quote, deeply institutionally racist. As a trainee priest, Calvin repeatedly challenged and refuted this statement. Cue the controversy that put Calvin at the centre of a good old stramash. Calvin and the Church of England have parted ways and last Saturday saw him ordained as a priest for the Free Church of England. Here's a glimpse of what happened. Will you in the strength of the Holy Spirit continually stir up the gift of God that is in you to make Christ known among all whom you serve? By the grace of God, I will. Congregation, stand. Brothers and sisters, you have heard how great is the charge that this ordinance is ready to undertake. And you have heard his, de his declarations. It is, now, is it now your will that he should be ordained? It is. Will you continually pray for him? We will. Will you uphold and encourage him in his ministry? We will. And... Calvin Robinson is with us now. Greetings. Thank you for having me on, Neil. That's it's so strange watching that back. I can't imagine that there are many occasions when priestly ordinations have featured on television. No, I think this might be the first time, actually. And I do need to specify, it's a, I'm a deacon now, not a priest. Um, I spent some time as a deacon before I get uh, ordained as a priest. OK, and having been ordained, have you, been, have you already taken up your, your role? Yeah, absolutely. So the next day following the ordination, I was leading a service in my church, Christ Church Halston in northwest London, 11 a.m. every Sunday. Um, and I was straight in there in the deep end. It was fantastic. It was like everything I've been working towards for the last few years, um, kind of the penultimate of it. Now, you were with uh, the Church of England. You're now with the Free Church of England. Yeah. For my shame, although I know all about the Free Church of Scotland, I was hitherto unaware of the Free Church of England. Is that, a, is that a recent manifestation? That's a very good question. So the Free Church of England split from the Church of England in 1844. So they've been going for a long, long while. And what that means is they've, they call themselves continuing Anglicans. And that means they've maintained their theology, maintained their liturgy from 1844. So by modern standards, it's actually a lot more uh, orthodox, a lot more small c conservative and a lot more Christian than the Church of England is in its institutional status at the moment. Um, but it's part of a wider global movement. It's part of the GAFCON movement, which uh, formed in 2008 when the Jerusalem Declaration was signed, which said that the church, big C, is moving away from the faith you know, with things like the trans movement, um, homosexual marriage, female ordination, a whole host of um, progressive issues that have grasped the church. Uh, and the GAFCON movement said, look, we want to affirm the faith, we want to stay true to the faith, and we don't want to chase societal norms. So across Africa and across North America and across Europe, lots of denominations came together and formed this Anglican communion of, of tradition. So it wasn't for you just the issue of racism alleged within the Church of England. There were b broader doctrinal yeah. differences of opinion between yeah. yourself and the, and the Church. Doctrinal and political. It really, really started to get to me the fact that I'd hear the archbishops on the news talking about the latest Conservative government policy, but I still haven't heard them talk about Roe v Wade. You know, I, w I won't hear them hear, talk about abortion or the sanctity of life or about marriage or family values, but I will hear them talk about anything conservative that they don't like. Um, that's that's more, more and more common. You know, they talk about Brexit quite a lot. All of the bishops talk about Brexit uh, and climate change, but not about our saviour, Jesus Christ. You know, the Easter special, for example, we had an Easter special on GB News where we talked all about Jesus Christ. The Easter sermon from the Archbishop of Canterbury was a denunciation of the conservative government, once again. For, in your estimation, I mean, I appreciate that you've now parted company with the Church of England and, you, and that your focus is elsewhere, but why would, a, why would the church 
uh, be self-destructive and self-flagellating in that way, mm. you, know, uh, uh, you know, assuming upon itself in deeply entrenched institutional racism, if you're clearly, you had clearly been in a position to challenge that assertion, why do that to themselves? That I'm still struggling with. This idea that they can come out and say, we are deeply institutionally racist without any evidence to back it up, any statistics whatsoever, and then say, you know, use a whole load of critical race theory jargon and say, we are gonna jump on board with affirmative action and quotas and all of these horrible ideas like unconscious bias training that have been debunked because they don't work and make things worse. For an institution to jump on board with all of that, when it goes against the thing they're supposed to be purporting, you know, the faith, they're supposed to be saying that we are all equal uh, under one nation, under Christ, or that there is neither Jew nor Greek. They're supposed to be saying that race doesn't matter and what they're actually doing. Uh, Well-intentioned, I'm sure, but they're causing a further division between all of us. Mo, how do you r respond listening to what Calvin says? Is, is, it, is the Church of England just yet another institution that, that has, I don't know, lost confidence in what it's supposed to be? lost its identity. You see, I, I might, and um, congratulations, Thank by you. the way. Um, and um, Calvin knows I'm a big admirer of um, some of the political things you've stood, stood out against. But to me, the, the church has always been sort of quite in line with the establishment. And for me, a lot of the woke stuff is kind of, like if you look at woke capitalism, you know, from Ben and Jerry's to the Halifax mm. Building Society, the, the, that's a new establishment ideology. So how do you, as a Christian and a conservative, maintain the status quo when actually where the where the original line is drawn yeah. uh, keeps changing? I mean, I just don't know how, I'm not a conservative, so I'm not sure how you would do that. How do you maintain tradition yeah. when in actual fact, the sands are so shifting. That is the issue, isn't it? So the church has an easy way of doing this. It has the book, it has the Bible. That is how we, that's where we draw the line or where we should draw the line on any issue. And it gets difficult as society progresses because we assume that progress is linear. It's always a good thing, but it's not. But on certain issues, it's more challenging to follow the Bible, but we are called, it's supposed to be challenging. We're called to live a life in Christ. We're not called to live a life by societal norms. So the church shouldn't be chasing society. So on issues that are really difficult, uh, such as homosexual marriage, that's one that progressive society would say is an equality issue. It's an issue that you know anyone should have access to that. But under the church, under the Christian faith, marriage is between a man and a woman for procreation, for the, the fulfillment of going forth and multiplying. Um, you can't do that in a homosexual marriage traditionally. Um, so it's not again, it's not saying that homosexuality is wrong or bad. It's just saying that marriage within the Christian faith is one man, one woman. Now the church is embarrassed about that. The church wouldn't want to talk about that publicly because it would be seen as old-fashioned. Now. There's nothing wrong with being old-fashioned when you have a book that tells you exactly how you're supposed to live your life. Mm -hmm. So rather than being ashamed or embarrassed, the church should come forward and say, these are our values, this is what we stand for, but they don't. Nick, how do you feel hearing someone uh, like Calvin mm. de deliver that uh, position, which, which has an, an undeniable internal logic to it? Mm. You know, this is, this is a, an, a, an entity that exists to tell people what's in the Bible. I guess the question is really, so, We've got an established church in England. Um, so I guess my question is really when people say, well, the church shouldn't become involved in politics, etc." I guess the issue for me is just really, well, it's an established church, so how is it going to be? Well, you've got bishops in the House of Lords who decide on legislation. You know, you, you cannot completely disentangle the Church of England from politics. I just think it's completely impossible. Um, so is the, is the solution, if you like, to what you describe as the crisis of Anglicanism? I mean, other people might have a different view, but as you describe it, to disestablish church, because then it would be right. completely free to, to be what it is, right. uh, to, be a, 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 you know, to be a religion. So I've never said that the church should not be political. Right. Our, our faith is political, because it's telling mm. people how to live their lives. It's telling people how to live a good life in Christ. You can't do that without being political. Mm. On issues like, I mentioned marriage and abortion, they are two key ones where yep. we're very political, and that I would be very pro-life, uh, speaking up for the voice, the unheard voice of the unborn baby, for example. But, I don't think the church or bishops should be party political, and that's my issue. It's always mm. anti-Brexit, anti-conservative. And I think disestablishment might be a route to take the faith away from the state mm. and, and to become faithful and religious. Because mm. that's, you know, that's why I'm in the free Church of England. It's the Church of England free from the state. From the state, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Calvin, you've spoken elsewhere about the, the primacy for you of uh, 
faith, culture, and education. Yes. A, a sort of a three-legged stool that, that that's you know un, that's steady and un, unwavering and unwobbling. Yeah. Could you develop that idea, that that tripartite idea? Yeah. So that's pretty much what I've been trying to do for the entirety of my professional career is speak about faith, culture and education. So education, because I was a school teacher and assistant head, and it is, and the reason I entered it is because it's how we get our message across to the next generation. And I do think that we've slipped there. We've, we've dropped the ball there in that we've now passed on the role of parenting to the state in that we expect the state to look after our children and pass on values to our children, which is why kids often come home not agreeing with their parents and not liking their parents because they are being indoctrinated into a set of values that are not compatible with their family. And that's troubling because school should always be supplemental. It should help parents, not replace parents. But and then culture, because we are losing our culture. I mean, it's controversial to say, but in London, white British people are now in a minority, which means that Britain at some point may not look British anymore. I don't mean in terms of race, I mean in terms of culture, in terms of the things, the values that we hold dear. And, and people say, you know, that might sound xenophobic or racist, whatever, but British values are important because they are not equal. A lot of countries around the world do not hold British values. In a lot of countries around the world, it's okay to stone someone to death of being homosexual, or it's okay to say a woman can't go out on her own without being chaperoned. I don't think those are good values. I think British values of democracy, the rule of law, and tolerance of people of different faiths and non are more important than other values. Uh, and, and faith, because without faith, we are lost. We, you know, everyone has to feel that like they belong to something. Everyone has an innate sense of there being something bigger than themselves. And when they don't realize that that's God or Jesus Christ, they look out to other avenues to fulfill that, that void within them. This is why Extinction Rebellion, Black Lives Matter, all of these really extreme lobbyist groups, the trans movement, this is why they're all thriving right now, because people are looking for that sense of belonging and they're finding it in all the wrong places. I spoke earlier tonight and I've spoken previously, uh, sitting here about uh, the capture of the institutions capture of the universities, capture of the schools, capture of politics. Is the Church of England captured? Absolutely, 100%. Um, of the 116 bishops in the Church of England, 115 of them are, were in favour of remaining in the European Union. One bishop outwardly voted, uh, spoke out to vote for leave. He is no longer a bishop and he got cast out to the, the far end of the empire. This is a groupthink echo chamber of lefty liberals which wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing, but they are gatekeepers and they are preventing conservatives from getting in, from getting ordained and becoming ministers of Christ. How do you feel now, as of the events last Saturday and your first service the following day? What's... Free, liberated. I'm now able to do what I've been trained to do, what I've been formed to do, what I've been called to do, serve Christ and serve my community. Simple as that. You know, if I, if I had been ordained in the CV, Every single day would have been a battle against the establishment, against the hierarchy of lefty liberals who don't want to proclaim Christ but want to proclaim the latest progressive value. And that would have worn me down. But now I'm able to just get on with my ministry and preach the gospel, preach the good news. Enjoy, Calvin. Thank you. God bless you. Best of luck to you. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for coming in this evening.